canoe. Now this is a painter. There's all sorts of theories as to why it's called a painter. It comes from old wooden sailing ships. Not sure which one to believe. So we'll just call it a painter. The important thing is it's bright rope and it's floating rope. So on the, if it drops into the river it floats on the surface. It's not going to sink and grab onto something on the bottom. This rope I've fixed in, we'll look at how we do that. So my favourite knot for doing this is a bowline. And so now that's a totally correct bowline and because the this rope is on the inside of the knot. The knot is tied around the rope that goes away, which we call the load rope. It's very easy to mistie a bowling. Tie it like so. So now the end is on the outside of the knot. To be honest, I think in the days where you were just tying this knot, tying up a ship, having it on the inside was important for more I can understand. My reading is there is no difference in breaking strain whether you have this on the inside or the outside. But the only problem with a bowling is that if it flaps around, you can see already it's beginning to loosen. And that's not good. So I'm going to retie it to do the correct bowling, although the cowboy bowling does work. I'm not worried if I tie a cowboy bowling. But now the rope's on the inside. To stop the the problem with the flapping, then I'm going to tie what's called a double thumb knot up against that. If you know a double fisherman's, this is half of the double fisherman's. That doesn't make it a fisherman's, it's still only half of the double fisherman. But we'll show you that in detail. So that's one way of tying on. I don't want a very big loop here and everybody must know never to put the hand in this loop if they're in the river. If you take a swim, you certainly don't want your hand in there because if you get your hand in there, and some people would advocate tying this tighter, but if you get your hand in there and the boat turns over, it's locked your hand to the boat. And swimming down a rapid attached to a boat with half a tonne or more of water in it, it's not good at all. So either do that bit uh, smaller, which I'll do with the next knot, or there we go. One of the problems with a bowline is it's easy to tie it incorrectly. And here I put the wrong kink into the rope and now I'm taking the uh, rope around the loop and not around the load rope. So when we hold it out, the shape of the knot looks the same, but it's tied around the loop and not the load rope. Under pressure, and it will need an extreme pressure, the, the knot will slide. It's not a good one to have. The overhand knot is extremely simple. I do it on a bite of rope, that's a doubled piece of rope, just a tuck over and tuck through itself. In climbing we'd go an extra turn and end up with a figure of eight knot, 
but here this is all that's needed nice long tail on it so it can't pull back into the knot and I could just use it here I'm using it to clip my bag to the boat via carabiner so again nice and simple form a loop a bite of rope we very often call it fold it over and tuck through itself tidy everything up I like all the bits of rope in it to be parallel and that's something to really note that as you follow it through it's like a set of train tracks with tight bends everything is parallel nice easy knot So the, the issue with the bowling is if you can tie it, it's a brilliant knot because even when you load it up, it's easy to untie. So it's great for this job. I can pull the boat around, I can tie it to the bank, I can heave hoe up the bank with it, but I can still untie the bowling relatively easily. But if you're not a knot person, then the better knot to use for you is an overhand knot. Now, you could... Just do your overhand knot so you create a loop and use a carabiner to clip it to the end. And some people do that. They, in fact, they leave this knot in. The problem with that is you never learn knots. So what I would advocate is that you do the re-threaded overhand knot. So there, over and through. Very simple. And now I can feed this up through here. And now I've got to follow the train tracks back. I'm going to follow it back. It always sounds so very simple, but if you're not a knot person, it's quite amusing to watch your hands. So following it through, follow it round, follow it round, and now it says follow it back through. Tighten it up, and that's all really neat. I can do it so that there's a very small loop there. I can't get my hand in it, so that's a good safety feature. Easier to do that with this than with the bowling, but I can do it with a bowling. Now, as long as I've got a tail of about that length, I don't need to do anything else. I don't need to do a finishing knot because the overhand knot in itself will work. The difficulty is, if you really heave ho on it, it's much harder to untie. But it's still untieable. And very quickly, if you're doing this every time you go out canoeing, then you're going to be good at this knot. When I'm attaching the rope inside my boat, I'll very often use a clove hitch. Nice long tail, because it can work itself loose. I could use some half hitches, but no need to be honest here. The original way I learned to tie a clove hitch as a climber was to create bunny ears. One one way, one the other, fold them behind each other, and drop them over something and very often dropping them into a carabiner and if I'm using a carabiner or a post I will use exactly the same method create the bunny ears and drop it into place but very often in a paddling situation because I'm tying onto a seat or a thwart I can't put the rope over the ends 
and so I have to do this method where I wrap it round the rope but look where I tuck it back through quick and easy And when I'm on, um, particularly when I'm on a river, I would do it on a lake if it wasn't other than really absolutely calm. I'm going to attach my gear into the boat. So in the first instance, I'm going to look at just putting in a small bag. It's a watershed bag. It's meant to be totally waterproof. It's been absolutely bummer for me. I've swum in rapids. Boats got stuck. Bag's been bouncing around in the rapid and it still hasn't got any water in. But anything vitals in a second dry bag inside. So anyway, that's all closed up, ready to go. But if I take a swim in a rapid, I don't want that disappearing downstream, losing it or just the inconvenience. So what I'm going to do is take this piece of rope and I'm going to attach it to the boat and I'm going to attach it to that. And that method is it's actually called a leash. So it's on a leash, rather like a dog is on a lead. So what I'm going to do here is tie a clovitch around the seat and I've left quite a long tail because if you've got a short tail and it gets a bit loose it can pull itself clear. If I was tying it around here clovitch is probably not the best for most jobs. Uh, if I did tie the clovitch I would also then do a number of half hitches up here to make it really secure. So that's the end at the boat. I've chosen the length so that it can drift clear of the boat. If somebody's doing a rescue, they can just grab this, unclip, bring it into theirs. But at the other one, we come back to our overhand knot. But this time, instead of doing a re-threaded, I can do it on a bite, on a double piece of rope, over and through. Again, I want a decent tail on it so it doesn't work loose. And I can clip it in. To be honest, with this sort of thing I very often do the carabiner. I think I'm going to be really secure. I'll do it up. But there you are. The bag's now on that. I can move it around within the boat. If I take a swim, it's not going to disappear. But somebody else can grab it, unclip, take it into their boat. So. Clovitch on that end, overhand knot on that end, and it's a neat little system. So it's what I do with bigger bags. Uh, this is very much a canoe bag. Flat topped, um, it's not heavily laden at the moment, but when it's heavily laden it's still flat top. So if I'm somewhere where I'm using a Kevlar canoe, I could conceivably, or I used to be able to, carry this bag plus the canoe on top of it and, and it's designed specifically for that and I like the fact the handles everywhere so it's easy to get in and out of the boat so anyway I'm going to put this in this this is only something I'm going to use on expedition and what I'm going to do is just cinch those down where's that gone up there it is I'm going to close that strap up. It's not important that that one's tight, but I'll just do that. So that's now ready for sorting in my boat. Now, I could, like with the orange bag, put it on a leash so it floats clear. And if I've only got the one big bag, maybe one small bag, I could connect them both really tight together and that would be okay. But if I've got more than that, I like to tie my bags down into my boat, particularly on expedition. I'm off to Canada in a few days. Our kit will be tied into the boats and it becomes part of the flotation of the boat. You can't pack these so heavy that they're not flotation. So if, if we swamp in a rapid or anything like that, or I'm out in open water and we take on a lot, this is it's the same as an airbag. It's displacing water, so it's useful to me. 
if it's tied down. So I can put it on a leash, and I do put it on a leash in these, these situations. But what I'm going to do is actually tie it down. Now, I'm going to start, I could start at the seat, but I'm going to start here on this bolt. And I'm going to do a Kovic again. I'm going to go through the bag. I'm going to drop it down and bring it up through the seat. I'll talk about that in a moment. Drop it down through the seat and bring it up. Now I can come back through on this level. And again, I've ended up with the cloakage. What I'm careful of, I mean, sometimes when I've got a fully laden boat, longer boat, I've got kit all the way through it, I might tie the knots here at the bag seat. But if you've got a bag paddler, you've got to be very careful because if we hit a rock in a the rapid, their weight tends to shoot forward, but the feet back. And you don't want straps from your rucksack, you don't want loops from your rope anywhere down there because it's already gone wrong in the rapid, you've hit something and the, you may capsize at this point but it started to go wrong. You don't want anything down here that will catch feet. So if you do tie knots at this end they need to be neat and there needs to be no dangly bits. I would actually bring any ends back over here and retie. So that's a really important safety issue if you've got somebody on the bow seat. That's all fastened and the nice thing with this piece of cord is I've got some spare. I, if I was just going to go down the river like this well then I need to tie this back in but I'm going to tie an overhand knot. I can now fasten my orange bag on the leash. So actually I've got the best of both worlds. My main bag is providing buoyancy and is a solid part of the boat but I've got this bag which I want to open up maybe on a leash and I can move it around and it's out of my way. Hi folks, I hope you found that interesting and helpful and what you can do is you can press like, you can subscribe and comments are always welcome. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a link in the description below for buymeacoffee.com. My own book, Canoeing, is available directly from myself, but there are links in the description below for easy buys in North America or the rest of Europe. Thank you for watching, and thank you for the support.